Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, Hi. Alonzo, Christy, Hi. Matt. So Wednesday nights, I tape a podcast called Who Shot Ya? It's on the Maximum Fun Network, you should totally check it out. Oh sure, make it about you. Well, I just wanted to throw <laughs> out there that because I tape that show on Wednesday yeah. nights, sometimes I miss a screening when it shows one time. Who are you, Ben Mangowitz? Yeah. Uh, who, are we, who are you, who are you? We all have our yeah. moments of you know scheduling conflicts. Anyway, cutting to the chase, I didn't see Gringo, but they did. This, and they're gonna yeah. tell you all about this it. This is not one you need to catch up with. No, no. <laughs> all right, so. Gringo, I think, tells the story about a company that may be getting sold to another company. This particular company is run by Joel Edgerton and Charlize Theron, and uh, their hardworking employee, David Oyelowo, uh, is a guy named Harold. Harold is really trying to get ahead, and he follows the rules, and he's married to uh, Tandy Newton. Tandy Newton. Uh, mm -hmm. And he goes down to Mexico uh, with the bosses to do something and it's unclear what and uh, things happen and there's there's problems with drug dealers and honestly this movie is kind of incomprehensible and not very good but watch the trailer and see if you can figure it out because I couldn't. <laughs> what is that? It's an injectable microchip. Okay. I need to keep tracking. I don't like needles. Ah! Okay. You can't scare me with tales of the big bad cartels. I don't know how things work. Not in Mexico. That means that's Harold. 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 Bingo. Bingo. You really believe in God? Of course I believe in God. What kind of person does not believe in God? I guess I kind of do, but not. Yeah, this morning when my kid woke up, he was like, Mommy, how was your movie? I said, not very good. He goes, what was it about? I said, I can't even tell you. Like, just awful people doing awful things to each other for like nearly two hours. This movie is very long. It is very yeah. long. And, and, and the thing is, David Oyelowo is the only decent human being, pretty much. Amanda right. Seyfried is too, but she's such a secondary thought. She's barely right. flushed out. She's just along for the ride with somebody else who also happens to be in Mexico for this same drug deal. Um, if he's, he's like a drug smuggler, her boyfriend. Anyway, yeah. it's, it's very complicated. Or a drug mule. Uh, this movie feels like it was one of those like late 90s, early 2000s, like kind of madcap dark comedies with giant casts where everyone is despicable. Right. Um, it right. feels very right. dated and very behind its times. And even people like Charlize Theron, who who was great, and David Oyelowo, who was great, can't bring much to a screenplay where there's there's nothing to these people and the twists and the convolutions, you know, all feel totally contrived and like you don't care who lives and who dies. There's you know. after Tarantino arrives on the scene, you've got a bunch of movies that people are trying to suddenly get in that space. And Way of the Gun is one of those movies that this makes me think of that Things a little bit. Things to do in Denver when yeah, you're Yeah, kind of, right? This is a little bit like that, uh, but not in a particularly good way. And there's moments, this is one of my phrases, this is a rare one that I bring up, but drink, moments of competency in this movie. <laughs> uh, glimmers. Glimmers, <laughs> uh, it flirts with competence. Uh, there's a scene where David Oyelowo is super drunk. Right, and that's kind of funny because the way he plays it and like the internal monologue when he's gonna tell off his boss. And then Charlize Theron plays this character who is ruthless and sexy and I would watch a better movie with that character in it. Uh, I thought that was really, she brings far more to that role that is actually on the page. Mm -hmm. Uh, because she's Charlize Theron, mm -hmm. that was kind of interesting. The character that um, the brother, uh, Charlotte Copley, Charlotte Copley plays yes. <laughs> that you know the reform mercenary who is now trying to go straight. Like that's kind of interesting. I think Joel Edgerton is wildly miscast in this, especially because he's this character that Charlize Theron and another character continue to throw themselves at, and it's like. Why? Why? He's just Why? such an awful human like, being. He's just awful, and they don't make him look particularly no. sexy. It could be one thing, like, I would get it, like, put Fassbender in that same role, like, oh, okay. Sure, that makes sense. Right? That makes sense, <laughs> right? Like, all right, I got it. But this was also I, directed by Joel Edgerton's brother. Yeah. You should mention that right? pretty so, high up here. Right. So it's like, hey, Dash bro, Edgerton. will you be in my movie? I'll hook you up with yes. Charlize Theron and, yeah. and Tandy Newton. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a scene. So this is not a spoiler. Charlize Theron and Joel Edgerton's characters are having an affair with each other. And there's a scene that they flash back to over and over again from various perspectives where the two of them are having sex in the bathroom attached okay. to his yeah. office, right? And he's bending her over the, the sink and she's checking herself out in the mirror while they're having sex. And she's like looking at her 
her lip liner and like more interested in how she looks in that moment than the actual act she's taking part in. And like little moments like that, she makes this character more interesting, right. you know, than it probably was right. on the page. Um, there's a great scene with her and what's his name? Who was Cameron in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Ellen Rock. Ellen Rock. Yes, he's, yeah. um, he is the executive yes. at this company that they're maybe going to merge with. Yeah, that, and that bar scene is, that's a fun scene. It's very fun and very daring. And again, it's like she's doing this high wire act where you don't know like how far will she push it in, as far as being like sexy and troubling. And, and so, yeah, again, and she does that with like young adult, for example. She can make right. mean, bitchy characters interesting and more complex than perhaps you might think at first blush. Um, but yeah, and David Yellowo. He's in kind of a put upon role. He's like a nice guy, middle manager who eventually finds some backbone. That's not a spoiler. Right, and either. there's and there's yeah. fun bits in it. Like he's got you know again the, that scene where he's been, where Harold's been drinking, and he's got the internal monologue that of or the monologue that he's practicing what he's going to say to Joel Edgerton before he gets on the phone. There's the ransoms you know the where he calls and asks for ransom that's a really that was a funny scene that's a funny yeah. scene <laughs> the scene where he's driving around and he's rapping along to uh getting jiggy with getting it getting jiggy <laughs> with it like that was really good so again there's moments that like oh god you see what could have been a real movie here and then the rest of it just complete and then by the end the end is just such a disaster yeah um, Everyone does. Yeah, it's a mess. So, so we saw this movie last night at a big all media screening, and they will often bring regular folks in to pad the room, and they encourage outward expression of your reaction to the film. To put and there it mildly, was a dude. there was a guy who had way more fun at this movie than like anybody else in the room. With every single person who gets shot, and a lot of people get He's shot. He's like, the- yeah. Wah! Yeah. Wah! At one point, he yelled out, "Keep it 100, man!" I'm like, we're Speaking in memes, like we say, <laughs> I think I say yeah. LOL next. Right? I mean, we're, we're, we're speaking these things out loud. It was who, very strange. Whoever recruits those screenings, they know what they're doing. I still yeah. remember the woman who sat behind me and howled at every single anything that resembled a joke in Gili. Uh, mm. We laughed at Gili. That's 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 some <laughs> commitment to the mm. bit. J Lo yoga scene. We all laughed at Gili. Yeah, I'm not sure so, we laughed with it. So he had a good time. I'm not sure anybody else did. Um, yeah, and it, it's it keeps keeps going and going and going and multiple double crosses and a couple of the female characters, Tanya Newton and Amanda Seyfried, both are just there's nothing to them. Right. Their decisions make no sense. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good, not despite good the the cavalcade of talent that is uh, yeah, been amassed for this thing. They all kind of deserve a better movie than this. Yes, so I'm saying four because, like you, I laughed here and there. Here and there, uh, four and a half, uh, and that half probably comes from the two margaritas I had before the movie. Yeah, I was sober. I might have been higher if I uh, had had a drink beforehand. If too. you had been high. If I had been high. <laughs> um, so my numbers, our number rather, is a four point three. It's at thirty six percent on the tomato meter, and I don't really see it. Getting much higher than that. Nope. So. Just remember, whenever you look at a cast and think, oh, with these actors, how bad could it be? You don't want to know the answer. Yeah, I'm going to point you to Gringo. Bye.